All right, then, my friends. So in the last lesson, we had a little look at create signal. And to change these, we use these functions, but we did it by creating set timeouts. Now, normally, you're not going to do that in your website. You would probably change any kind of signal or state value when a user does something, like click on a button, for example, or maybe enter something into an input field. So let's have a look at how we can react to those different events. And it's dead simple to do. So let's create a button down here first. And let's spell this correctly as well, button. And it will say change the name inside this button. Now, if I want to attach a click event listener to this, I can just say on click. And then we set it equal to something in curly braces. Now, this could be an inline function where we do something, or it could reference another function that we create up here, for example. So I could say const change name is equal to a function. And inside this function, we will say set name and change it to peach like so. So now I can just reference that function change name like so. And when we click on this, you can see it updates peach. Awesome. Now, what if we want to pass in an argument? So it would become that argument, the name. Well, we need to pass it in down here. And that could be, for example, Bowser. But when we do that, notice it's going to do it straight away. And that's because when this is being evaluated, it's running this function right away because we're invoking it. So what we need to do is wrap this inside another function, which isn't invoked automatically. So we do an arrow function and then we change the name inside that. And now when we click on this, it's going to run this function. And inside that we invoke this change name function right here. Okay. So now that works. So we can also react to other events. So for example, I could do an input field right here with a type attribute equal to text. And what I'd like to do is type into this input. And when I type into that, it updates the name in real time. So the way I can do that is say on input. And when we do that, we're going to fire a function. And all we'll do is set the name to be equal to whatever the current value is inside here. Now, in order to do that, we need the event property, which we get automatically inside whichever handler function we pass in here. Here it's an inline function. So we get that. So right here, I can say e dot target dot, and then it's going to be the value. So now if I start to type in Sean, you can see it update over here. Awesome. Now, in order to get that kind of two way data binding, we can say the value is equal as well to the name, but we need to invoke that like so. And now you can see because the name is Luigi right here, it becomes Luigi here. And if I click on the button and it changes to Bowser, it becomes Bowser right here, but it still works the other way. If I type in Sean, it becomes Sean. All right. So there's the basics of reacting to these kind of events on click and on input. Now let's do this inside our project. Okay then, so first of all, I just wanted to show you that inside the index file in the head, I've already pasted in a link to the Google icons library, material icons, and that just means I can use material icons inside our components using the material icons class or the material symbols class. So what I'm going to do is come to the app component first of all, and we're going to create an icon because when we click on this icon in the future, it's going to do something. So this is a span and I'm going to give it a class and the class is equal to material hyphen symbols, hyphen outlined, and then also a tailwind class, which is cursor hyphen pointer, just so when we hover over it, it goes into that pointer cursor. All right, so now inside here, we need to use the icon keyword, which is light underscore mode. We're gonna save that, just preview it so far, and we can see this little sun icon right here. So I wanna make it so that when we click on this, it's gonna to toggle a bit of state, and that state is going to be for a dark theme. So that's going to be true or false. Now, let me create that first of all. I'm going to say const dark theme and set dark theme. And we're going to set it equal to create signal. Click on that to import it up here from solid. And then invoke this. The initial value is going to be false. And then when we click on this, this thing around here, where is it? This one. I want to make it true. So I'm going to now attach some kind of event to this. So let me say on click and set it equal to toggle theme. Now that's going to be a function 
up here. So we'll say function toggle theme, like so. We need a space right here. And inside that, I'm just going to say set dark theme, and it's going to be the opposite of what it currently is. So I can say exclamation mark and then dark theme and invoke that. So whatever it currently is, change that to the opposite. Okay then, so now what I'd like to do is when we have a value of true for this, I want to style the header slightly different. Now to begin with, let me just apply some basic styles to the header. So the class is going to be my-4, so margin in the y direction, padding all the way around, strength 2, text hyphen XL to make the text a bit bigger. We're going to set the display to be flex, items hyphen center, and then gap hyphen 4. Now if I save this and preview over here, we can just see that these now sit next to each other. Now when I click on this, it's going to be toggling that state but we want to do something in reaction to that. So what we can do is use class list to dynamically apply different classes dependent on this condition, what the value of this is. So an object, and the first class I want to conditionally apply is BG hyphen neutral, and then hyphen 900. And that's like a really dark kind of gray color, nearly black, but not quite. And we're going to apply that if dark theme is true. So if we invoke this to get the value, if that's true, then it's going to apply this. If it's false, it won't. So let's also do another class, and that's going to be text hyphen white. Again, these are just tailwind classes. So text white. And again, that's going to be if we have a value of true for dark theme. Like so. So let me save this now and preview. I'm going to click on this. We get the dark theme, so it colors it dark, the header, click on it again, it toggles it back. Awesome. So that's a very simple example of using a click listener right here, and also a signal, and these conditional classes. Now it is a really, really simple example, and all we're doing is coloring the background of the header black, so it's not really a dark theme, is it? But you could take this further, and you could apply different conditional classes to different elements dependent on the value of this thing right here. Or you could even just apply a class conditionally to the overall div wrapper and then style things differently dependent on that class inside your global CSS or something.